every person who is charged with a criminal offense is entitled to defend himself in person or by a legal practitioner of his own choice. Remember that an individual is entitled to remain silent. Every citizen in Nigeria is entitled to maintain a private life. You are approaching a military checkpoint or a police checkpoint without knowing that it's against or it offends them and subject you to a frog jump. That is wrong. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the program Justify Nigeria on ACNN Television, reaching you from Abuja. On today's episode of the program, we are going to be looking at the legal essence of jurisdiction. My name is Anozi Chinomso. Tons of Nigerian statutes and court decisions are dotted with the 12th letter word jurisdiction. This is because jurisdiction is the heart of adjudications. It oxygenates all causes and matters that are determinable in court of law. It is a factual fact that the concept of jurisdiction holds a kingly position in the administration of justice. Little wonder our courts are constantly awash with stony jurisdictional issues. Incidentally, the much touted concept of jurisdiction presents a paradox in terms of text. This is amply demonstrated by its importance being glossed over in the sense of paucity of issues. What then is jurisdiction all about? Its relevance and applicability in the judicial process and administration of justice? With me in the studio to discuss this and more is Barrister Mrs. Jardine Okafo, the Assistant Legal Advisor, Federal Minister of Interior, Abuja. You are welcome to the program, ma. Thank you. Emma, we talk about jurisdiction oftentimes, people that are not lawyers or a layman, if we may say, talk about that, may not necessarily know what it is. Now, please tell us, talk to us, what is jurisdiction and how important is it in legal adjudication? Thank you. Talking about jurisdiction, what comes to mind immediately is the power of the court to adjudicate or to enforce the law. Jurisdiction also has to do with the exercise of the power. Talking about jurisdiction also, what comes to mind is the region within which power can be exercised, within which a given power can be exercised, meaning that when you have jurisdiction, it talks about the power, how you exercise it, and the limits to which such power can be exercised. All right, that's basically what judiciary is all about, the power for somebody to, or the courts to have to entertain issues. That's what you're saying, somebody, what judiciary is about. Sure. Then, more from your explanation now, does it mean there's any difference or relationship between judicial and demora? Because oftentimes we go to court, we hear demora, we hear jurisdiction. Are there, is there any relationship or otherwise similarity? Okay, before I go into that, I want to let you know, that, let our audience know the fact that this jurisdiction is derived from the state. Okay. Yes, it's the state that determines what power any court can have. And when you look at the status that establishes the courts, okay. it makes provision for the jurisdiction of any court. Okay. I've already said the jurisdiction has to do with the exercise of the power and the region within which such power can be exercised. Now, talking about the mora, the mora on its own. Yes, I was coming to that. What is Demora before we now go ahead? You are, you okay, are Demora yes. is talking about objection okay. or throwing a challenge to an issue raised. Okay. Yes. That's what Demora is all about? Yes. Throwing an issue, maybe it comes to uh, well, an objection, whether yes. an objection or any other way, an issue raised. Yes. And is there any difference between that Demora now and jurisdiction, or are they the same? Very big difference okay. between Demora 
jurisdiction. and jurisdiction. The Mora is gradually phasing off these days with motions. You see somebody applying for motion for striking out a matter that is before the court, giving reason that maybe the, um, the issue has no sufficient evidence or has no sufficient um, juridical attention for the court to adjudicate on it. For a, a demora to come up, the plaintiff has to bring up an issue to the court to adjudicate. Then the defendant, seeing that the, um, the plaintiff hasn't got sufficient issues, will challenge the bringing up of those issues because the defendant feels that, yes, much as the fact on the demora may be true, but the plaintiff bringing up that issue does not have sufficient evidence or may not even have the locus to bring up the issue. But jurisdiction, on the other hand, can be raised at any point in time as the issue is brought up before the court, trying to challenge the power of the court to adjudicate on the issue. And for jurisdiction to take place, there must be um, power over the person and then there must be power over the subject matter, okay. which in the case of the Mora is not the case. Okay, that is to say somehow that the jurisdiction have a, a greater level of uh, power over the Mora, if I yes. use that word. Yes, the um, jurisdiction yes. is the foundation of any matter before the court. You made mention of is that you can even raise jurisdiction at any level, even on appeal. Is it possible to? Of course, you can raise the um, jurisdiction at the court of first instance where the matter started okay. you can raise jurisdiction at the court of appeal okay. you can also raise jurisdiction at even at the court um, supreme, supreme court. court the appeals court sure, sure at any level at any level yes you can raise the issue of jurisdiction wow that's great that's great that's great what it means you are questioning the competence of the court to adjudicate on the matter before it. So from what you're saying, my name is that once any court is lacking in judicial, the higher court might strike out that matter, even if there's a decision that will already be taken in the lower court. Very well. And that is why it's very important for any counsel, as soon as a matter is brought to him, to be very, very observant to find out whether the, comp the court has the competence. Okay, the court is going to, first of all, have the yes, competence. Yes, yes, whether it has the competence. And where the court lacks the competence is, fa is fair enough for the counsel to start raising that issue of um, jurisdiction. Judicial. Because if the court goes on to adjudicate on a matter that it lacks jurisdiction, no matter how brilliant that decision may be, it will go to no avail. It will be quashed at, at the, the court Supreme Court. Yes, That's at the Supreme Court or at the Court of Appeal. No matter how, that means judicial is the kingly one in, in all these things. I said it's the foundation of mm. any adjudication foundation. in any court whatsoever. Foundation of any adjudication in any court. In fact, some judges have decided that is the life wire of any court, of any case before the court. Mm, thank you very much, Barrister Mrs. Geraldine Okafor. Now, looking at uh, jurisdiction, uh, we want to see whether there is any dichotomy uh, between jurisdiction and inherent power, because oftentimes you go to court and you see people, um, judges talking about, or lawyers talking about inherent power. Is there any difference between jurisdiction and inherent power, or are they the same thing? Just like you told us now, there's difference between jurisdiction and demora. Is there any difference or similarity? Inherent power of a court is a natural power that the court has to adjudicate on cases. But then, when we talk about jurisdiction as also an inherent power, yes, there are cases whereby the law establishing a court may give it a particular or may limit it from handling some cases. For example, we have the labor, um, the industrial court that handles labor matters. So if you take any labor matter to the federal high court, no matter how well such matters are decided there, it will not, in fact, it will be null and void. Because they don't have the inherent power. Yes, they don't have that inherent or power. Or taking election petition to industrial courts. Exactly, yes. Okay. So most of the time, the statute gives the, the jurisdiction to a particular court to handle some cases. 
you know. So where such cases are taken to another case, for example, se um, Section 251 of the um, Constitution of Nigeria gave certain power to the Federal High Court to adjudicate on certain fundamental issues. Those are exclusively reserved for the Federal High Court. So if any other court Courts. handles such matters, for example, issues on immigration, issues on foreign um, uh, relations, bilateral relations. If you take it to any high court, already they, they lack the jurisdiction. It's dead on arrival. But then the, the, the statute has given the is, uh, inherent jurisdiction to, this, to the federal high court to handle those exclusively reserved for the high, federal high court and at the same time exclusively reserved for the industrial high court. Or industrial courts. Thank you very so much. that is the a bit of the dichotomy between the inherent yes. power oh, and the jurisdiction. Thank yes. you very much. Jurisdiction is the life wire of every adjudication in law of court. Are there classifications or types of jurisdiction? Are there any other thing we need to know about jurisdiction? All we are going to be hearing from Barrister Mr. General for when we return from this break. Please do join us again. Hi. You're welcome to The Speaker, the program that treats political issues in the polity. It remains a statement of fact that money is a useful facility which enables one to do something with ease. But when one begins to worship money and enters into the trap and web of money and insatiability of its negative futures, that person develops a catastrophic attitude of primitive accumulation. Similarly, Loans are borrowed when the need arises and maximum caution must be applied. This is because for an individual, group of people or country that wants to borrow loan from any source must utilize it very well and ensure a better way in servicing that loan. But in a situation where Nigeria through our government officials and political class borrow loans without conscience, one will be tempted to ask, whether this money is borrowed, are loans or loots. This is because the amount of loans Nigeria have borrowed is a clear pointer to the fact that we are accumulating financial loads to our generation yet unborn. Debt Management Office website reports reveals that at the end of March 2015, two months before President Buhari took office on 29th May, the country owed a total of 12 trillion naira. At the end of June 2015, this debt has risen slightly to 12.1 trillion. This was when the official exchange rate was 199 naira per dollar. Vanguard newspaper of 24th October 2018 quoted Mr. Pitobi, the former governor of Anambra State and 2019 PDP vice presidential candidate that the current Buhari administration has plunged Nigeria into a deeper debt profile to the tune of $80 billion with nothing to show for it. In May 2020, the federal government asked the National Assembly to approve a total of 5.51 trillion naira external borrowing to fund its revised 2020 budget. It is also on record that the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, told journalists on April 6, 2020, that federal government had to borrow another fresh loan of $6.9 billion to counter the spread of coronavirus. And what a country. Similarly, the Minister of Transport, Chibike Rotimi Amechi, stated that Nigeria has secured a loan of $7.5 billion from China for the construction of standard rail gauge from Lagos to Kano. This is most laughable. It is really disheartening and discomforting that Nigeria claimed to be independent, yet we can't take charge of our affairs effectively, efficiently, and satisfactorily. We claim to be giants of Africa, and yet we cannot feed ourselves. What happened to our agriculture? What happened to Nigeria Airways? What happened to our refineries? and all the dilapidated assets that Nigeria has that should be yielding a massive and enough income and employment to Nigeria. Can't our political leaders rehabilitate and restore these infrastructures 
and cut down the cost of governance. Why should a president or governor be moving about with huge number of security details and exotic cards? Why should a minister or any other government official have 50 to 100 special assistants? Was it not because of misplacement of leadership and governmental priority that the former governor of Imo State, Owele Rocha Asana Yokorocha, created a cajoled ministry of happiness? It is therefore my speech that until government restructures this country, and restores all these dilapidated infrastructures and drastically cut down the cost of governance, we shall continue to secure financial loots in the name of loans for our generation and generation yet unborn. My name is Anna Zichinomso. I just want to speak. Glad to know that you are still there. We are still here with uh, Barrister Mrs. Geraldine Okafor, the Assistant Legal Advisor at Federal Minister of Interior, Abuja. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, before we went on break, you have um, told us the difference between jurisdiction and, of course, that of inherent power. And earlier before now, you have also enlightened us on the difference between jurisdiction and, of course, that of Demora. But our question now to you is, what are the classification? Are they types of jurisdiction or are they just one? Are they Please talk to us and enlighten our audience. Yes, there are different types of jurisdiction. We have original jurisdiction. We have appellate jurisdiction, and we have exclusive jurisdiction. Expressate, ma. Now, talking about original jurisdiction, that is the jurisdiction that is exercised at the court of first instance. And for such jurisdiction to come to play, the court must have jurisdiction over person. Okay. It must have jurisdiction over the subject matter okay the parties now and the subject matter yes the, the of parties, action now yes the okay. parties and the subject matter the court may have jurisdiction over the person and if it lacks jurisdiction over the subject matter it cannot adjudicate so for the jurisdiction to be there must be jurisdiction over persons and there must be jurisdiction over the subject matter. And where these two are together, that is where we say the court has original jurisdiction. Okay, okay. Yes, now talking about appellate jurisdiction, this is the right of a superior court to review a decision already taken by... Um, the court of first instance. Yes, the court of first instance. Okay. Now, when we talk about exclusive um, jurisdiction that is where the law establishing a particular um, crime or court has said that when so 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 and so crime is committed it must be taken to, to a particular court. court I give example of the Constitution section 251 in particular which listed out those um, activities that must be handled exclusively by the Federal High Court. So High Court have no right to entertain such matters no. when the law is spelled out? No, no. There are also cases that the Supreme Court has the um, exclusive legislation, um, exclusive uh, right. right of jurisdiction to hear at first instance. Oh, yes, even the we court, have example of such cases? Yes, we have like um, a, a case involving the president and um, the National Assembly. Okay, even yes. Court of Appeal has no jurisdiction about that. Yes, yes. Now, Ma, yes. can a court on their own, knowing that they don't have jurisdiction, decline jurisdiction? Yes, 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 yes. I, I, I didn't mention that. Yes, where the council or the parties fail to bring up the issue of jurisdiction, and the court observes that it lacks the jurisdiction That's to the adjudicate. That's the on their own now. Yes, the court can on its own, so motto, yes. according to lawyers, yes. decline um, jurisdiction as long as it will give parties opportunity to make their presentation on those um, on the issue where court has taken that decision. Oh, that's great. Yes. That's great. So, so it then means that if uh, counsel or the parties, people involved, fail to do that, the court has the right also to declare judicial on that. Yes, because the court knows the consequence that no matter yeah. how well the decision is taken and the issue of jurisdiction is raised at any point, even before judgment, the whole thing will be a nullity. Mm. So to avoid effort in futility, everyone is out to check out, to look out for 
the issue of jurisdiction before any matter is um, gone ahead to be adjudicated upon. Thank you very much, uh, Barrister Mr. Jerino Kafo, for this enlightenment. Now, uh, we know about this case, lawyers will say locus classicus. I don't really know what they mean by that, but I know that is the issue where a particular principle is being derived. And when we look at the case of uh, Madokolo against Nkendelem, and they talked about certain things that came out of it, can you just educate our viewers um, the, the what happened in that uh, briefly, Madhu the, the ratio that came out from that case, Madhu Koloma gets in Kendalem. Yes, talking about the case of uh, Madhu and Kendalem, the average lawyer knows about that case because it's a case that brought out the issue of jurisdiction and to some extent the issue of demora. Yes, to the extent that um, is a case that involves customary land. Okay. The plaintiff in that case brought up a matter that the defendant was given land and the defendant built on the land on an agreement that he'll be paying rent to the plaintiff. But after two, two years, he declined and built his house. But after some time, the plaintiff now brought an issue that the land is theirs and that um, the, the defendant should pay the rent or else. So the defendant claimed that the land belongs to him since he lives there. So going backward and backward, issue came up that um, while the plaintiff was talking about the issue of title the defendant was talking about the issue of rent at the end of the day the plaintiff won the case at the court of first instance but on appeal when the issue of rent was raised the plaintiff the, there was a reversal of the of case this. but then on appeal the defendant still won the case because it was discovered that the plaintiff did not bring up the issue of um, he was talking about the issue of ownership okay. rather than the issue of um, um, rent that was the issue. So going back and forth on that issue, it, 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 it was found that the plaintiff did not bring some of the major issues that he would have brought up to gain this, to win this case at the beginning. So that is where we now say the demora issue come up, came up. The defendant knew that, yes, the plaintiff is the rightful owner of the land, but since his case was not properly presented, he was foreclosed. I mean, the plaintiff was foreclosed based on the application Five of the mora filed by the yes, yes. Okay, that's just the summary of those whole things. Yes. Okay, now, man, what's your last word, maybe, or your advice to other citizens or lawyers so that uh, if there's any word you have to tell them before we go? Um... Sometimes people lose their case, good cases, either because of this issue of jurisdiction or improper presentation of their matter, as in that Madukolo's case. So the fact is to uh, my colleagues, lawyers, we should be apt at the instance of any matter being served on us to check out the competence of the court. And once at the slightest inkling of lack of jurisdiction, that should be presented before the court. Because the court, if going on with a lack of jurisdiction, means a nullity. To avoid effort and futility, it's good that um, we look out for such um, issues fundamental to the adjudication of the case so that people won't keep saying lawyers are liars because they don't understand the interests and the rules that must be followed, must be obeyed to get to a um, justiciable decision. Court. Thank you very much. You've just said it from her. We must have to be apt and very, very thorough in all we do for us to get the actual fact of judicial in the court of law. Thank you very much, Barrister Mrs. Jardino Kafo. I hope when next we call you, you oblige us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jurisdiction is the legal barometer with which the competence or otherwise of courts and the causes are gauged. It occupies an Olympian position in administration of justice. 
According to Pakaribi YJS, as it then was, in the case of Ajomale against Edwards, 1991 5 Supreme Court Nigerian Judgment 172 at 176. Open jurisdiction has the right of the court to hear and determine the disputes between the parties. It is therefore my submission that any proceeding wanting in jurisdiction is automatically and inextricably merged in the web of nullity. This is where we draw the curtain of today's episode of Justifying Nigeria. Join us same time, same station on another fresh episode of the program. My name is Anna Zichinomso. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.